Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about my deal breakers for standing new K-pop groups. Everyone has different preferences as to why they will or won't stand a specific group, and I thought it would be fun to talk about what specifically puts me off from getting into a new group that I stumble across. Now, for a video like this, it would be nice if I could use groups and artists as examples, maybe talking about a group specifically and how they exhibited certain traits that I didn't like, which ended up in me not wanting to get further into the group. But, in fear of people misinterpreting my words if I do that, instead, I'm going to be as specific as I can without directly mentioning any groups that I'm going to be referencing. And without further ado, let's talk about specific reasons that will prevent me from standing a K-pop group, aka my K-pop group deal breakers. So for number one, let's start with one of my music-based deal breakers. And deal breaker number one is if their title tracks are literally the worst songs in their discography. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm the kind of person that will get really into discussions of like what B-side could have been the title track. And if I listen to a group's discography and I find out that their title tracks are worse than a majority of their B-sides, I don't know if this is irrational, but I'm just going to be completely honest here, that kind of pisses me off. Like, I hate the idea of a group releasing amazing B-sides, but all of the discussion that happens around a group's music is centered around their worst songs. I'm not entirely sure why that is, maybe it's the idea of telling someone that I'm part of a group's fandom and then they think I stand them because of songs that I do not like, or maybe it's how a group's title track will set up the image that people have of them in their minds, and I don't like that image, but the overall idea is that most of the attention and buzz about a group's music is going to be directed at their title tracks, and it almost makes me bitter if all of the other songs on the album are better than the title track in my opinion, and deserve the attention that the title track got way more. I'll think things like, wow, it would have been so cool if this song got a music video, or wow, I wish we could have gotten a choreography and live stages for this b-side. And there's not much incentive for me to really engage with the group and their promotions if the single that they're going to be using to promote is a song that I can't enjoy. <laughs> My second K-pop group deal breaker is if I've had noticeable conflicts with the fandom of a certain group or artist. I know there's a lot of discussion as to whether or not the fandom is a valid reason to unstand a group or not, and I don't really care what position other people have on this argument, but personally, I'm of the opinion that it is a valid reason. You know, I don't really go out of my way to start fights, I'm not about the conflama, but if I get wrapped up in an aggressive situation, to the point where when I think about a group, the first thing I think about is the negative interactions I've had with members of that fandom, at that point, if I stand the group, I'm probably going to unstand them, and if I don't stand them, I'm going to stay as far away as possible. As time has gone by, I've unstand and restand and unstand and restand so many different groups, and recently I've actually taken a lot of groups out of my stand list, so check my description if you want to see what's going on there. But what a lot of people don't realize is that the reason why I've taken a lot of these groups out of my stand list isn't because I don't enjoy their music anymore, and isn't because I don't like the members. Sometimes, not all the times, the reason that I unstand an artist is simply because I don't like the artist's fandom, or maybe just a specific person or two within that fandom. K-pop stands are nasty, and the reality is fandoms of a group change other people's perception of that group as a whole. And at the end of the day, if a specific fandom acts nasty towards a person, that person is going to remember how that fandom made them feel, which is something that they probably won't forget. <laughs> So deal breaker number three is if there's such a big gap in talent between the members to where it affects the performances. Do you ever have that moment where you're watching a group stage and one member is sticking out in a bad way? Maybe they're not doing the dance at the same level as the rest of the members, or maybe the majority of the members are super bright and expressive and one of them looks like a deer in the headlights. It doesn't really matter how they stand out honestly, but if I finish watching a performance and the first thing that I think about afterwards is an oh wow that was a pretty good performance and instead is wow, that one person could not keep up. If that happens, then me getting into the group is not gonna happen. I think K-pop is an industry where the phrase you're organized and perfected, but there are a decent amount of groups out there where the gap in talent between the members is glaringly obvious, which makes it so when you compare these groups to almost any other one, they're gonna stand out in a really bad way. And I usually just can't handle that amount of disjointedness within a group. A good example of a group that's able to cause the group is still so synchronized when they dance. Unfortunately, there are a lot of groups that aren't able to be synchronized like that, and for those groups, I just can't really bring myself to stand them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Moving on to my next deal breaker, one reason why I will really try to avoid standing a group is if their self-produced music that they make themselves is really bad. Now, I don't really care whether or not a group produces their own music or not, or I guess a better way to phrase that is I'll still stand a group even if they're not involved in the creative process of their music. I guess I do like it when there's a composer or two within a group that I'm getting into, but if there's a member within a group that makes music for the group and those songs are way worse than the songs that are given to the group, then it's gonna make me feel a little bit awkward, I guess. I don't really know how to put it into words, but my best attempt at doing so is, you know, you have so much good music within your group's catalog, but you're not able to make music even half as good on your own. I don't know, it's just kind of a weird feeling when idols who make music on their own aren't on the same caliber as the people who usually make their music. Because in my mind, there are two main scenarios where a self-producing idol puts out bad music. Either they haven't put in the time and effort that they need to in order to gain the skills that it takes to make a good song, or they have all of the skills that they need, but it's their own personal taste that makes their music not sound good to me. And in either of those two situations, it kind of just makes me vibe less with that idol. I'm not saying that a self-producing idol having bad music reflects poorly on their own personal character. I'm sure they have amazing personalities, but I'm not looking for friendships when I stand a K-pop idol. I'm looking for a good sense of creative direction. And if I really do not like the creative direction that a K-pop group has, then I'm not going to stand them. And that's just how I am. Next up, another one of my deal breakers for standing a new group is if the group is pretty inactive as a whole. Like, if by the time I discover an artist, if they haven't had a full group comeback in over three years, and the chances of them reuniting for a comeback is slim to none, then I see literally no reason to get attached to them. I know a lot of people that stand like the really classic early third gen and late second gen boy groups, and whenever I listen to those groups' music, I do think it's pretty good. But half of the fun of standing a K-pop group is the anticipation for what music they're gonna release next. It's so fun to be able to follow the new schedules of the groups that you stand, and the ability to see how they grow as an artist and in popularity is something that you can't really do with these groups that are mainly inactive. If there's nothing to look forward to in the near future, I'd rather just become a casual listener of a group than like an actual stan, and if I'm never gonna see the members together performing on music shows, then I'm not gonna bother learning their names either. I mean, this isn't always the case I stand Ladies Code and Sistar after they disbanded, but I would say that those two cases are kind of unique because the members still do interact with each other pretty frequently, and if we're lucky, the Sistar members will release collab singles too. Meanwhile, a majority of the staple K-pop groups that are inactive right now, basically all we get from them is radio silence, and I just don't really care to get into them the way that other people do. Downtown, booty show on the top floor. We don't care who is it, on the top floor. Next up, another one of my deal breakers is if the group's newer music is significantly worse than their older catalog. For me, a group's music should get better as time goes on, but what's been happening with a lot of groups recently, more than I can count on two hands, is that it seems like their music gets worse and worse with every new comeback, which is honestly kind of impressive, but it doesn't make me want to stand them. Like, if I'm gonna stand a group, but the entire time that I stand them, I'm just gonna be wanting them to go back to their older sound, then I don't understand why I'd want to put myself through that pain. To me, it just seems like a better option to avoid the group entirely. Uh, maybe not entirely, but like, avoid standing the group. I don't know, I guess I just feel like if a group's newer music is consistently worse than their older stuff, then I'm not gonna have any faith in them to release better music in the future. And I don't want to stand a group that's been following that kind of trend and then just feel that disappointment when they have their next comeback. It all comes down to personal preference, but if I prefer a group's older music to their newer music, then chances are I'm not gonna stand them. And last section in this video, my final deal breaker is if I really do not enjoy one of the members. I mean, full disclosure, I do not like every single K-pop idol that I come across, and it's not like it's the idol's fault, there are just a lot of idols that I don't really vibe with. Due to my own personal preferences and just my opinions on certain kinds of personalities, I guess. I don't like everyone I meet, and that applies to idols too. Not naming names, of course, because I'm not that messy, I just don't want to have to like, quote unquote, tolerate a member because I don't like them even if I enjoy the rest of them. I feel like if you don't like every single member of a group that you stand, then you're not really getting like the full experience, I guess. So for me personally, I'm just not gonna stand a group if I don't like everyone. But as I should, if I'm like this with a group, 
I keep it to myself. Because throwing that negativity into the world is wildly unnecessary. And that concludes this video. Let me know what you all thought of my deal breakers, and let me know if you have your own in the comment section down below. Thank you all so much for watching the video, I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, consider leaving a like and maybe even subscribing. Thank you all again so much for watching, and without further ado, I'll see you all in the next video. <laughs>